TheAdvocateChannel.com looks at the world through the lens of equality and inclusion. Subscribe, like, and share now. AC 24-7's Top Story Countdown continues with our producer's pick for number three. Well, according to this new study from the CDC, researchers suggest that how we work as Americans simply is not working out. Americans spend a lot of time on work. It just permeates our entire life. And that can take a toll, especially under tough conditions. Working conditions can have a tremendous impact on our mental health. A new report out Tuesday from the CDC reveals in 2021 about one in every 37 working adults aged 18 to 64 experienced serious psychological distress severe enough to require treatment. The rates significantly higher for those who reported they had to work when physically ill, as well as for those who did not have access to paid sick leave. Likewise, people with late night or rotating shifts, inflexible schedules, and inconsistent pay also reported poor mental health. People need to have a sense of agency in their lives. Dr. Dennis Stoley of the American Psychological Association says a key reason behind the distress is a need for both predictability and flexibility. Where people have the ability to both be able to count on fundamental things like that they're going to be able to pay their bills with their next paycheck. His advice for employers don't choose between economic productivity and caring for employees. The two go hand in hand. A sense of psychological safety in a workplace increases productivity, increases innovation, increases retention, and they have a positive impact on their economic bottom line. And in the realm of good news, the experts we spoke with did express some degree of optimism because it is such a competitive economy right now and employers either now or down the road may have little to no choice but to cater better to their employees and their employees' sense of well-being and mental health. In Los Angeles, I'm Mike Valerio. Like the Advocate channel on Facebook for the best way to get updates on stories that advocate for equality, justice, our rights, and more. AC 24-7 continues with today's top two pick. Nikki Haley calling for national consensus on abortion. If we want to protect more moms and save more babies, we need more Americans to join with us. The sole female Republican presidential contender making a pitch aimed at attracting more moderate Republicans and swing voters and turning the issue personal. I am pro-life, not because the Republican Party tells me to be, but for very personal reasons. My husband was adopted and I am reminded of that blessing every single day. She also spoke about having troubles conceiving her own children, a friend who was raped, and backed a federal role on abortions. But her speech didn't define a specific national abortion limit that she would put forth as president. They've turned a sensitive issue that has long divided people into a kind of gotcha bidding war. Republicans secured a decade-long goal last year when the Supreme Court overturned Roe, but the decision ultimately helped Democrats defy expectations in the midterm elections. Still, many Republican-led states have moved forward with new abortion restrictions, and GOP hopefuls have embraced those policies. I'm pro-life. I'm 100% pro-life. I'm pro-life. The president of the Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America Group, the anti-abortion group that hosted Haley on Tuesday has drawn a clear line in the sand. We can only support candidates that know that they have a role, uh, if they're in the Oval Office, to advocate for a federal minimum standard of 15 weeks. The group told CNN that Haley had assured them that she will commit to 15 weeks, even though she didn't say that publicly. We recently signed the heartbeat bill to protect life. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a six-week ban in his state earlier this month, though he did so behind closed doors. Senator Tim Scott voiced support for a 20-week ban, only to say this a day later. If I were president of the United States, I would literally sign the most conservative pro-life legislation that they can get through Congress. And former President Donald Trump wavering on whether or not the issue should be handled by states or the federal government. From my first day in office, I took historic action to protect the unborn. Former Vice President Mike Pence, who has said he would support a six-week federal ban, drawing a contrast with Trump. I don't agree with 
the former president who says this is a state's only issue. I mean, we, we've been given a new beginning for life in this country. Follow The Advocate channel on Twitter and Instagram to stay updated on stories that matter every day. Here's our number one story of the day. Take a look. We don't want the city to be taken over, but we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Felicia Briscoe has owned this beauty salon in North Jackson, Mississippi for more than two decades. Beauty salons used to be open door where you could just walk in, but we can't allow that anymore. Just 10 years ago, there were 50 homicides in Jackson a year. In 2021, that number jumped to more than 150, with the murder rate more than 12 times the national average. Now, a new pair of laws meant to help fix the issue are creating a deep divide between the city and state by the laws partly having state law enforcement patrol all of Jackson and state leaders appointing some judges and prosecutors. But also, the state legislature is majority Republican and majority white. They approve these laws that affect the city of Jackson, which is majority Democratic and more than 80% black. What kind of message do you think this sends to your residents? It says that we don't value your voice, that uh, we don't believe that black leadership is capable of, of moving forward for itself. This road that includes schools, churches, and homes will soon become the new edge of the so-called Capital Complex Improvement District. Now, under old rules, the edge of the district would mean the edge of Capitol Police's jurisdiction. Now, it'll extend beyond those boundaries into the greater Jackson, giving the state-run police jurisdiction citywide. In theory, to work with an understaffed city police department. You look at carjacking and you look at murders and say, oh, that's a crime problem. Nah, brother, that is a symptom of people not valuing each other and not valuing themselves. And, and for Captain Vance, the key to the success of any added officers goes beyond numbers. You have to go out your way to know these people and have a relationship with them because policing without a relationship is, is occupation. Both laws were introduced as bills by legislators who represent districts outside of Jackson. They just cannot help themselves. Democratic State Senator John Horn has represented parts of Jackson for more than 30 years. We see this as an assault on black elected leadership uh, because we have political differences with our colleagues and because they have the political power and the will to bring about these changes. But the changes are coming. We need Jackson to prosper. We as a state need a downtown area that is attracting young people to it. Regardless of the representation issues, this bill seems to be providing some help. What, what do you say to folks who argue that? In any moment where you find yourself in a crisis, what you don't want to do is reach for a solution that places you uh, in a worse position than you already find yourself. So, yeah, don't come back down here, so, Outside of politics, some residents say any change is going to start on the ground. Invest to you means something different. If you take the time out to value this place and, and see it for what it is, man, we might well be first cousin. Back in the salon, Briscoe knows the laws aren't perfect but she also knows something has to change. What do you think you're gonna need to unlock your doors again? It's gonna take a lot for people to feel comfortable again. I'm Sonia Baghdadi. Join me weekdays on Advocate Now, a show dedicated to celebrating diversity with in-depth discussions on equality, women's issues, wellness, and important topics that advocate for all. Thanks for watching the Advocate Channel's top stories. We're on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Follow, like, and share, or check out advocatechannel.com for even more stories that advocate for you.